to the sixth chapter. Guárdense de las buenas acciones hechas a la vista de todos, a fin de que todos los aprecien, pues en ese caso no les guardaría premio alguno que esperar de su Padre que está en el cielo. Cuando huyes a un necesitado, no lo publiques al son de las trompetas, no imites a los que dan espectáculos en las sinagogas y en las calles, para que los hombres lo alaben. Yo se los digo, ellos han recibido ya su premio. Tú cuando ayudes a un necesitado, ni siquiera tu mano izquierda debe saber lo que hace la derecha. Tu limosna quedará en secreto y tu padre que ve en lo secreto te premiará. Cuando ustedes recen, no imiten a los que de, den espectáculo. Les gusta orar de pie en las sinagogas y en las esquinas de las plazas para que la gente los vea. Yo les digo, ellos han recibido ya a su premio. Pero tú, cuando reces, entra en tu pieza, cierra la puerta y ora a tu padre que está ahí a solas contigo. Y tu padre que ve en lo secreto te premiará. Cuando ustedes hagan un ayuno, no pongan cara triste, como los que dan espectáculo y aparentan palidez, para que todos noten sus ayunos. Yo se los digo, ellos han recibido ya su premio. Cuando tú hagas ayuno, lávate la cara y perfúmate el cabello. No son los hombres los que notarán tu ayuno, sino tu padre que ve las cosas secretas y tu padre que ve en los secretos te premiará. No junten tesoros y reservas aquí en la tierra, donde la polilla y el óxido hacen estragos y donde los ladrones rompen el muro y roban. Junten tes no junten tesoros y reservas, donde no hay polilla ni óxido para hacer estragos y donde no hay ladrones para romper el muro y robar, pues donde, donde está tu tesoro, allí estará también tu corazón. The Gospel of the Lord. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine asked me, what does Lent mean to you? And does anyone really care about Lent anymore? I have to admit, at first, I was a little offended that she would even ask me such a question. But then just as I was about to answer, it struck me. What does Lent mean to me? As my friend sat patiently waiting for an answer, I began to reflect on what Ash Wednesday and Lent have meant to me over the years. I wish I could say that Lent has always been an important part of my Christian faith, but the truth is, especially in my younger years, Ash Wednesday and the season of Lent were more of an annoyance than a deeply spiritual endeavor. The tiny particles of ash on my forehead always seemed to find their way into my eyes. The cross was more like a smudge that did nothing but cause me to be more self-conscious about the dirt on my face. The messages convicting me of my sin were less than motivating. Fridays were reserved for sacrificial meatless meals like grilled cheese and tomato soup. And best of all, the season centered around trying to reluctantly follow the obligation to give up something that was meaningful. Today, we gather to celebrate Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the church season of Lent, a 40-day journey of self-reflection and committing ourselves to allowing the Holy Spirit to convict us of our sinfulness, to recognize the mortality of our humanity, and to hear the call to repent and change the direction that we're looking and moving. It all sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Let's just be honest here, Ash Wednesday and Lent are difficult. Sometimes I wonder if Lent is in trouble. Well, allow me to explain a little bit here. Most of us have a favorite holiday season. For some of us, it's Christmas, with all the family get-togethers, gift-giving and gift-receiving. 
For others, it may be Easter and the joys of spring and warmer weather. And still for others, it may be the 4th of July and summer, filled with a sense of national pride and the vacations that are yet to come. But it strikes me that very few of us would ever pick Lent, a season that to many seems to be as uninviting as the weather that typically accompanies it. Can you picture it? Each day opening the little doors of a chocolate calendar until Ash Wednesday? <laughs> Leaving work early and telling your coworkers, I've got to go get my Lenten shopping done. Advertisements on TV and billboards that read, only 12 more days till the day of ashes. Or little kids going to bed excitedly asking their parents, how much longer until Lent is here? I just don't see it happening. The trouble with Lent, I think, is fairly clear. To many, it seems like this strange, out-of-date holiday that celebrates things our contemporary society doesn't value and encourages attitudes people today don't necessarily share. So it really doesn't come as a surprise, then, that each year, fewer and fewer churches around the world observe this tradition. For many modern-day Christians, it's simply too old-fashioned and too medieval. So it causes me to wonder if Lent is in trouble. I mean, even among those traditions that do honor the season, rarely is there the same kind of enthusiasm or expectancy which greets Advent or Easter. Let's face it, nobody's hosting a Lenten breakfast fundraiser, and I don't know of many people longing to sing Lenten hymns ahead of time. I don't know. Maybe it's that there are no presents at the end and no fun and games along the way. Or maybe it's that Lent asks us to give up things. I mean, haven't we had to sacrifice enough already to get our kids through college, to save for retirement, to put the new roof on the house? Why should we give up anything more for Lent? Or maybe it's the themes of Lent that trouble us. Repentance sacrifice, self-examination, fasting, prayer. These are the words of Lent, and I have a hard time believing that they were popular even with the people in the early church. All this makes me wonder if Lent is in trouble. Each year as I listen to my non-Lent observing friends knock it as yet another good thing we do in an attempt to earn God's love, and my Lent-observing friends complain about it as an annoyance. The same question inevitably demands to be answered. Does anyone really care about Lent anymore? Before I can answer that, I need to first answer what Lent means to me. Because if it means giving things up or being beaten down with constant reminders of how worthless and temporary I am, or glorifying the importance of suffering, then truthfully, it doesn't have a whole lot of meaning to me. However, if it means embracing the importance of self-reflection when it comes to my identity as a follower of Christ, if it confronts me with who I believe Jesus to be and what the cross really means to me, and if it challenges how I understand the significance of the resurrection, then Lent has incredibly deep meaning for me. So each year as Lent approaches and the questions, what does Lent mean to me and does anyone really care about it come creeping back? The same answers whisper from deep within my very being. I need Lent. Just maybe I need a time to focus, to get my mind off of my career, my social life, my next project or adventure, and a hundred other things which I selfishly look to for meaning. And instead, center myself on God. Just maybe I need a time, and I don't even know if 40 days is enough to help clear my head of the distractions which life in this world will most certainly bring and reorient myself toward the creator of all that's been given for my enjoyment. Maybe I need the opportunity, and perhaps deep down I even crave the chance to clear my heart of indifference and apathy, which comes from moment after moment where I feel nearly helpless. 
so that I can turn my attention once again to the almost unbelievable revelation of the God who loves God's children enough to take the form of a man on the cross. And maybe, just maybe Lent isn't mine to do with whatever I please. Perhaps Lent isn't even the churches to insist upon or discard at will. Maybe Lent isn't any of ours to show contempt for or to observe. Maybe Lent is God's. Maybe Lent is God's gift to a people starved for meaning, for courage, for comfort, for life. And if it is, if we can imagine that Lent is not ours at all, but is wholly God's, then maybe we can also begin to remember that we too are not ours, but wholly God's. When we understand Lent this way, then Lent reminds us of whose we are. The sacrifices, the disciplines, these aren't intended as good works that we offer to God. Rather, they are God's gifts to us to remind us who we are. We are God's beloved. Daughters and sons, God's treasures so priceless that God was willing to go to any length to tell us that we are loved, that we have value, that we have purpose, and that we belong to God. Yes, I need Lent. I need an absence of gifts so that I might acknowledge the only gift that matters. I need a time to be quiet and still, a time to shut out the distractions of the world to hear again and again what was promised to me at baptism. You are mine. I love you. I am always with you. I need the reminder that the cross placed upon my head in baptism and repeatedly every Ash Wednesday is a reassurance that God in Christ is the one who redeems me and makes me whole again. That it is God's saving action in Jesus that gives me reason for hope. It gives purpose to my repentance. It reminds me that in my mortality and my human sinfulness, I can do nothing to save myself. I am dust, and to dust I shall return. But it is God who redeems and saves me from my sin and restores me to everlasting life. I need Lent to remind me of who I am, that I am God's beloved, so that come Easter I can rejoice and celebrate with all the joy and anticipation that comes with the fulfillment of the promise of the resurrection. So yes, I need Lent. And to tell you the truth, I suspect that you do too. Because you see, if Lent is in trouble, then it's only because we're so busy trying to find meaning or keep up with the world or save our status quo that we fail to notice that God has already saved us and has already freed us to live with each other and for each other. And so we have Lent. A gift not only for the church, but for the world. The season during which God prepares us to behold God's own immeasurable sacrifice for us. And then it's with the hope and prayer that come Good Friday and Easter, we are immersed once again into God's mercy. And more fully understand God's great love for us and the entire world. What does Lent mean to you? Because if you haven't answered this question in a while, then I wonder if maybe that's why Lent might seem less than appealing. It seems to me it's a question worth contemplating. The goal of Lent, as I understand it, is not simply to get it over with or merely get through it, but rather to be embraced by it. So what does Lent need to be for you this year? What are you going to do or not going to do to mark this season of Lent or to make these 40 days meaningful? I never did answer my friend's question about what Ash Wednesday and Lent mean to me. But the next time we're together, I intend to tell her that 
although they call me into uncomfortable places that remind me of my sinful and mortal humanity, most importantly, they remind me that I am a child of God and that I am marked with the cross of Christ forever. So sisters and brothers, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Thanks be to God. Amen.